What's up guys, it's Nika Lukova and today we are going to talk about what will happen if you will just have one liter of Turkish Angora. Coming up! Alright, um, so first of all, let's remember that we are talking about pedigree grid kittens. So if you are contacting someone, uh, some breeder of Turkish Angora, um, you will have a pedigree cat. So the cat will have a pedigree. Um, that will mean that uh, you will have the unique, um, the original cat that is quite uh, rare in the world and we almost have it counted, like we almost count for every cat, like we are so, such a small group of breeders and we don't have so many cats that, you know, we lost our counts, like it's, it's such a small group and you will have one of them. So uh, when you are thinking about um, having a litter at like say at eight months or one year when the kitten is um, it will grow older and maybe the vet would tell you it's better for the cat if you will desex uh, him or her after it's fully developed. So maybe you are like seduced on that idea, you know, just to try one time and see what happens and maybe make some money and you know, all that. Um, and it's kind of nice to have kittens in the house, that's true. Um, okay, so if you're thinking that, let's think about it a little bit. Because it's not uh, that magical at once and it's not all that pink. Um, so first of all, when the breeder will, um, will give you a kitten, the kitten most likely will be desexed, right? So the pet kitten that the breeders are selling uh, for non-breeders they will have, um, they will go already sprayed, already desexed. Um, what will happen? What can happen is that in your contract you will have a mention about desexing the cat. Uh, like at the age of that age, you must desex the cat. Um, uh, what may happen as well is is that you may um, need to pay the deposit until you uh, desex the cat and you show the vet certificate that the cat is desexed. Um, so the breeder will give you back the deposit, or maybe the breeder will hold uh, will hold the paper, so the pedigree and all the vaccines and stuff. That, well, vaccines I don't know, but pedigree yes. Um, the breeder will hold it and until you don't show that document that the cat is desex, um, you will not have that, um, you know, the papers. Even if you have the papers, um, you will still have to breed the pedigree cat, you will still have to have the transfer from the breeder, so you may um, actually produce with that cat legally or officially, okay? Um, so, uh, and first of all, of course, the breeder will do that for several reasons. Um, first of all, I think it's a love for, for cats and it's um, our caring for the breed. So we don't want uh, our breed to, you know, mix with all other cats and so we lose our breed. So we don't cross lines with tigers and we don't want that mixes because we specifically like the specific features of Turkish Angora. Um, if you like Persian cat with Angora, that's fine. But for us breeders, it's kind of a crime to cross, you know, Persian with Angora and we like, it's not a good idea. Um, so we want to preserve the breed and we want to um, make it more uh, popular and uh, to, you know, spread the world and so the people will know our breed better. And of course it's important, uh, another reason is also important is because uh, we are making an investment and obviously um, we sometimes import the cats and sometimes for breeding cats we are paying crazy amount of money and plus the import, uh, it's like a lot of money if you import from another part of the world and after you make that investment in the cattery, in your uh, education, in you know, knowing about the cattery thing, knowing about the genetics and stuff, um, it's not that simple, it's like sometimes it's just years of knowledge or years of experience and very experienced breeders obviously um, they will have, you know, some insurance that um, they, you, you will not breed with that cat without their permission. 
obviously because they are doing all that investment. Um, and then when you like when when you're thinking about the reasons, one of the most important reasons is that the risk is very high that the entire cat, the whole cat, uh, not this ex cat, will will be living in your house till its years of maturity, like say one year, and it will be a cat that wants a female or a female that wants a male, and they will keep looking, they will keep searching, you know, who is smelling or whatever, and then can smell like far away, and their idea will become sometimes um, their fixed idea is getting away, <laughs> it's just finding the female. So um, they will find a way to escape from your house. It's happened millions of times. Uh, with also like with some breeders when they are starting breeding, it's um, it's such a not obvious matter. It's that it's not uh, so simple to make a cat not to escape uh, when he wants to to do it, right? Um, so um, they will they can escape very like frequently and. So you may lose that cat, you may lose that cat. When the cat is lost, um, they will find uh, a cat to mate. Um, they probably will find a cat to mate. And the question is, what is this cat? Like what diseases this cat is carrying? Like um, if it's feline diseases like feline AIDS, you may not ever recover uh, this cat from that disease. It's not like they went to, you know, uh, talk some cat and they came back and nothing happened. That can be really, really, um, like, extremely dangerous. And so, um, also, they will come pregnant, right? Uh, they will escape, they will be alone, and they, they may have pregnancies, lots of them. Like, they will not start, uh, stop just when, with one. They will have unlimited pregnancies during all their lives until, you know, they will go to the shelter or some, some family, whatever. Um, so that is um, not a very, very cool thing to happen to, to the cats. Um, so either it's disease or pregnancy. Um, obviously, or not, maybe it's just a shelter, but it's not a future for our kitten that we will, we will desire for our special unique cats, you know. Um, and so I think it's very understandable and if you talk to the vet and you have a vet that is saying um, the, the, um, the maturity of the cat um, it's important um, you know think about the other part of the vets that are not um, not agree with them like the, the, the vets are not agreeing on the same thing uh, exactly like not all of them are saying, okay, only when the cat is mature, it's safe to desex. Um, there are breeders that will have, uh, sorry, vets that will have um, no problem at all to desex at 16 weeks. And uh, females may be a little bit late. So I'm not defending one way or another one, just make your choice. So you're a breeder, you are responsible and just think about the best for your cat. So I would recommend if you want to, you know, just uh, start breeding and you feel that it's something for you and you feel that immense love for Turkish Angora, that means that you first you need to, you know, have some knowledge, uh, learn about the subject, learn about the genetics, um, research the breeders, uh, contact them, maybe have a mentor. You know, there are a lot of stuff you can do and I think that um, I can make like an introductory course for, you know, uh, at least uh, cover the basics about the shows, about the pregnancies, about how to have birth, about the genetics and stuff. So you are a little bit more informed. And so from there on, you can go on your own or have a mentor or whatever. So, but that will require a lot of time, a lot of effort. Sometimes it's resources, you know, money to invest in cats and stuff. Um, it's uh, doing it right uh, from the start and it includes also some um, immense love for Turkish Angora because you will have um, the female cat that probably will be screaming um, uh, like at 3 a.m. at night when she wants the cat and uh, also the male cat will you know mark the territory with a special sm smell if he's not nurtured 
So like um, you will you will require some space and all that stuff. So if you want to you know dig a little bit deeper into it, we can make a course and you know we can make some videos. And if it's interesting uh, for you, we can like go that way. But just to try is a little bit too too irresponsible from the breeder's point of view. You know we know all the the, the things that will. Uh, uh, take you to to uh, to be a little bit more knowledge, knowledgeable of what you're doing and so we're a little bit um, aware of you know all the things that will take you to have that special litter and so I think that uh, for the sake of Turkish Angora uh, it's just not <laughs> such a good idea I, I, either you are like becoming a breeder and you're going that direction you have immensely in love with immensely love with these cats or you uh, just for the sake of trying or for the sake of you know making a little bit money I don't think that that is such a good idea because they can go so many ways wrong um, so yeah, just think carefully and ask um, lots and lots of questions and so yeah, uh, just inform yourself and make a good decision. Uh, thanks so much, bye bye.